Welcome back to the Better Your Life channel, where we discuss everything related to anxiety and our mental well-being. Now, my name is Jennifer Roblin, and I am an anxiety therapist and specialist. And today, we are discussing anxiety around exams. Now, many teenagers in the UK are currently waiting for their exam results. And this is a big day. It's the culmination of years of studying and the outcome may determine the next stage of their life, be that sixth form, college, university, an apprenticeship, or their first step into the job market. It's easy to assume that once we've sat our exams, the anxiety will go away. However, it is also really stressful waiting for the results. Even if your results are everything that you wanted, it can still be a really daunting period as it's a turning point and often the end of what previously felt familiar. So in this video, I'm going to provide some strategies for managing anxiety around taking exams, waiting for the results and navigating what comes next as well as how to adopt a more positive mindset during anxious times. But first of all, I just want to explain about understanding anxiety, just to make sure we're clear. Anxiety is your body's natural response to perceived danger, usually a danger that's not yet happened. Now, its sole purpose is to keep you safe. However, when you have a fear of failure or fear of judgment, or you're comparing yourself negatively with your peers, your body will trigger the stress response and prepare you for what we call the fight, flight or freeze response. Now, from an evolutionary perspective, your body doesn't understand the difference between running away from a tiger and the fear of sitting your exams or receiving your results. When you're fearful, the smoke alarm, that is anxiety, gets triggered. Now, if you find yourself procrastinating and you're avoiding studying or you're avoiding applying for college or uni and you're confused as to why you can't do the things that you actually know you need to do, that's because your body has gone into the freeze response and that's another anxious response. So you need strategies to be able to deal with this because you may have put unreasonably high um, expectations on yourself. Maybe you've been comparing yourself to a high achieving sibling or family member who always seems to get great grades with half the effort that you seem to have to put in. And this can result in you judging yourself unfavorably and using negative self-talk that can increase the anxiety. Now, even if your exam results exceed your expectations, it can still be a really scary time. This may mean now that you have to start preparing for the next phase and you're applying for jobs or you're moving away to university and you may have uncertainty about your future and this particular feeling is most likely quite unfamiliar. Now it's worth remembering that anxiety is a natural response however too much anxiety it doesn't serve you well and it'll keep you stuck and playing small so we need to be able to move forward and overcome our fears. Now, excessive anxiety is detrimental to your health. So we need to cultivate positive mindset to help us feel more in control of a situation. And what, what could be really helpful if you are feeling that you haven't got a lot of control right now is if you pop on over to the resources after this video, there's a worksheet in there called the Circle of Control and Influence. And I'm sure you'll find that really helpful if you download that. So how do you cultivate a positive mindset? Well, we all have a voice inside our head that may criticise everything that we do, feel and say. The chatter can seem relentless. What we tell ourselves will very much determine how we feel about ourselves. And this in turn will determine how we behave and how well we can adjust to life's challenges. So it's important to notice because our thoughts are 95% the same today as they were yesterday. So 95% of thoughts we have day after day after day. And this chatter is so familiar 
to us that we may not even realise what we're saying to ourselves. So if this sounds like you, there's another resource in the um, description that you can have a look at, and that's about anxious thoughts. It's an anxious thoughts diary so that you can track what it is you're thinking and you can question it. So pop on over again after the video and have a look at some of the resources I've got there. Now, as a rule, when you notice the thought or the chatter, ask yourself, would you speak to your best friend like this? The answer will usually be no. So you need to question why you are using such harsh words on yourself. So before we discuss healthy coping techniques to implement if you're feeling anxious or stressed, please do go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so that you're kept up to date with all our latest videos and the links to all our latest resources. Now, if you know anyone else that's struggling with anxiety, please do share this video with them as it helps me to be able to support more people who are currently struggling right now. So let's look at some healthy coping techniques. Now, during this time, you would want to focus on something more healthy. You've probably got some coping techniques that you currently use that are not serving you well. So one of the best things you can do is breathing exercises. I have loads of breathing exercises um, on this channel. And again, I'll put some links in the description. So to practice deep belly breathing, this sends a signal to your brain that you are safe and okay. When you're feeling anxious, most people breathe up in the tops of their chest and this limits the oxygen we can take in. So I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and blow out through your mouth and really feel your belly expand as you breathe in. Now pop your hand on your tummy right now and I really want you to focus on that. So as you breathe in, Feel your hand push out, and as you breathe out, it goes back again. And practice this for 10 breaths. Now, it's important to make sure that the out breath is longer. If you've ever experienced a panic attack, it feels that we're unable to take a breath. We do a lot of short, sharp breathing. But the reality is, it's that we're not taking a full breath out. So I want you to get used to just breathing out more. Now, another technique is to try and stay in the present moment as worrying will not help the outcome. When you feel anxious, you're giving that one situation, such as the worry about results, multiple occasions to make you feel nervous, anxious and overwhelmed, even when you don't have all the facts. Now, this will maintain an anxious state. So instead, remind yourself that right now you are safe and you will deal with what you need to if and as it happens. You can practice mindfulness where you use the 54321 technique. You focus on five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, two that you can smell, and one that you can taste. Now, exercise is another wonderful way because it releases endorphins, which are the happy hormones. And if there's something you can do out in nature, that's even better because being out in with the trees and you know green spaces, that helps us feel more grounded. You can surround yourself with people who you trust and who help you to feel safe. Ensure you eat healthy foods and stay hydrated and do prioritise getting enough sleep as well. Now you may want to use um, some positive affirmations as these can also help, help us feel, um, change the way we feel about ourselves. Now, an example of positive affirmations could include things like um, I, I am more than just my exam results. This reminds us that your self-worth is not tied up with the results that you get. It acknowledges that your identity goes way beyond your results and your true qualities, skills and potential in life exceed your academic achievements. You can say things like, I embrace whatever comes my way. Now, this affirmation, it cultivates a mindset of adaptability, curiosity and resilience. It acknowledges that life is full of uncertainties and whatever the exam result may be, you are equipped to face challenges and use them as stepping stones for growth. Now, one of the things that I say to myself is that life happens for us, not to us, because that way I believe that anything that happens to me, I'm able to cope with. 
So feel free to personalise these affirmations to align them with your own thoughts and feelings. Repeat them regularly, especially in moments where you have anxiety and fear, to help reframe the mindset positively and really embrace how they feel, not just the words themselves. Try to avoid negative comparisons. As tempting as it may be on results day, what strategies can you put in place to limit scrolling through social media and comparing yourself to others? Remind yourself that people only post what they're willing for us to see. So the posts that come up on your feed, that they're not going to be a true reflection of reality. Focus on your own personal growth and resiliency instead, rather than seeking external validation from others. Now life's a journey. You have not yet reached the destination, so there are plenty of opportunities for you to redirect your path in life should you need to or wish to. What can we do to learn from the challenges that you face? Now, anxiety often results from not taking on challenges because it doesn't give us the opportunity to learn. So trying something new or challenging can help you to grow. Most growth and learning occurs slightly outside of our comfort zone in what we call the stretch zone. Now, many really successful people have got where they are through stretching themselves, remaining curious, embracing their failures and using them to learn from. You often hear stories about people being an overnight success story. However, it's just not true. There's an awful lot of effort that's gone into the lead up to being successful. The majority of really successful people have put in the effort and implemented what they learn along the way. They have adjusted their strategies as needed and been adaptable. So many celebrities speak up about their anxiety nowadays. So who do you admire who has pushed through their anxiety to be the success that they are today? I'd love to know your comments and who it is that's inspired you. Many inspirational people who go on to have huge success, they've done it despite of their education. You've got Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple. He dropped out of college after just six months. It was his passion, his passion for technology and design and his perseverance that eventually led him to create, well, some of the most iconic devices in tech history. So what about Oprah Winfrey? Now, her life was marked with adversity and challenges and she had a really disruptive upbringing. So her talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, became a global phenomenon. And through her determination and her resiliency, she just did not give up. She went on to build a huge media empire. Richard Branson is another one, the founder of the, um, the Virgin Group. He struggled with his dyslexia at school and he eventually dropped out at the age of 16. It was his spirit and willingness to take risks and to learn from what did and didn't work out that led to his success. And his innovative approach and determination has made him one of the most prominent business figures. So instead of beating yourself up if you were to receive lower than hoped for grades, how can you see this as an opportunity to really think about what you want to do next? Remain curious as you have been given the opportunity to reevaluate your options and do what you love. How can you prepare? for different outcomes. So regardless of the outcome on results day, know that you will have multiple sliding door moments in life. And if one door closes, another one opens. I'd love you to think back to a time when something didn't work out quite how you'd expect it to, and the outcome was even better. We've all had times like that. Remind yourself that many people go on to have great careers they enjoy that are not related to their studies. So take this opportunity to think about how you really want your life to look like. Remember that you can have multiple different careers throughout your life and it's never too late to relearn something that you're passionate about. You, your results, they don't need to define your future. They don't need to define your identity. In fact, Life experiences can be far more valuable 
and build up resiliency for years to come. The more experiences you have in life, the more opportunities you have to learn. Now, if you um, know who you can talk to about feelings of anxiety, then, you know, reach out to people to help you. It's, it's okay to be disappointed. It might be that you turn to your friends, your family, your teachers. However, it may also be easier to talk to somebody who is not so emotionally invested in your results. It could even be that you're anxious about telling your parents or your caregivers about your results. Now recognise that they too may need to have some time to adapt to a change of direction for you. They too may be disappointed for you, not in you. This can be based on their own vision of how they imagined your life was going to look like and it may not have been aligned with your own vision. Now please do have a look at the free resources in the description as well. While these workbooks that um, I said they're all free, while they cannot eliminate anxiety completely or get to the root cause, what they do do is they do go a long way to aiding you on your journey. So if you need to speak to somebody about your anxiety, then there will be a link below in the comments and there'll be some more information over in the description. So please do share your own top tips in the comments as well, as I'd love to hear what they are. And remember, you are not alone here. And there is always a way to better your life one step at a time. So if you found this video useful, please like, share, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you get more insights and, and share with anyone that you think might benefit from it. So thank you for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.